Hey folks, here I am back out at the hangar working on the plane. And uh, today in the background, you're gonna see me, I am going through and I'm closing up more of the floor plates and the internal panels and whatnot and getting things made and, and fabricated such that it will all shut, basically. Uh, all the, I'm leaving some of it open though, uh, because a lot of it is where I'm gonna be running wires and tubes and other whatnots and I need to not close those up yet so I, I like I'm fixing them I'm putting them in place and then I'm taking them back out again um, but one of the things I'm doing in the beginning there was a lot of putting in the uh, pull rivets and yes I do regret not having a pneumatic pull rivet gun so I would say if you're starting a new build definitely get one of those I have done this entire build without one and I probably won't get one at this point but I should have so anyway uh, working on that and then uh, from there like I said it's a lot of a lot of taking metal that has literally been sitting in the in the darkest recesses of the hangar and finding where it lives to actually you know put it on there and I'm running out of parts uh, so that's interesting uh, but that's what I'm doing and then throughout this video I'll talk at various other stages of what's going on and then towards the end I'll actually give you a show of the wiring that uh, the the uh, the test I did so you can actually see the the lights come on and all that so show that that works and then uh, then yeah this is all preparing for the running of fuel lines brake lines and all that fun stuff so all right let's get to it so while I continue working on adding these nut plate holes to the laundry on per this step which closes up the back seat side panel here I thought I would discuss something a question that I get a lot and sorry if this is loud um, people ask me all the time about build log and what the requirements are you know what software I use for tracking my build and the answer is this you're looking at it um, <clears throat> I think people get really worried and bent out of shape as to tracking and what they have to do to prove that they did the work um, if you if you look online uh, there's actually good information about that and it's a lot less strict than I think people realize um, the there there's a number there's a number of things you need to track but mostly it's it's kind of hand wavy as I've been told you need to prove that you did 51% I mean that's ultimately the goal and you can do that through build logs like just a, a time just keeping a track of time or you can do it through detailed pictures I would actually suggest both you can do it through video and that's what I'm doing I'm not actually tracking much more than this you also need to though uh, hang on to your documents so just keep every document so like shipping documents uh, obviously the plans you know if you can provide the plans and show that you've crossed things off as you did them stuff like that that'll go a long way and then the other thing is if you get any assistance you need to track that time as well so for example um, if you get commercial assistance like a builder assist program you want to keep not only the amount of time that they helped but also keep receipts I'm told is a good idea and you also want to track time when people come out and help you that that uh, aren't commercials just you and your buddy you don't have to be too anal though I think that's I think that's the thing is people are expecting to need to be way more anal than they actually have to be about tracking this stuff um, the people that I've talked to that have built planes before said that like in my case this footage that I'm doing I mean if this is not enough nothing will be <laughs> so uh, I, I know that in in buddy's case you know he took pictures along the way he took you know every day he would take a picture and that's what he did that day and that was that was enough so I have to think that that will still be enough today you know that was years ago that he you know he had to prove it but I have to think that would be ample today as well so I would say don't sweat it uh, you don't need some subscription to some service or something out there 
though there are such things. That's just money that would be better spent on avionics. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Uh, do you have to have some kind of build log? Yes. Do you have to go crazy with your build log? No, no, you don't. Uh, the, just pictures, documentation, you know, basic hours maybe, you know, a spreadsheet will do just fine. I have to, I have to think it comes down to someone's going to come out, like a, I guess a DAR, or someone's going to come out and ask you questions and, and you'll just answer questions. But most of the time I'm willing to bet it'll never even get that far. You're going to sign off on the FAA document that, yes, you were the builder, you are the 51% person, and you are going to be the guy that's responsible for the plane and thus be the person that can do the maintenance and whatnot, and it'll never get checked. I'm not saying lie. I'm not saying fudging. You know, don't, don't, don't do wrong. Uh, I'm just saying I don't think it's as big as an issue as a lot of people think it is. So, all right. I've got a whole bunch more nut plates to drill, so fun, fun. Well, so there's a, a lot's been done, so I lost a little bit of footage, so you guys don't get to see everything. Uh, sorry about that. Um, sometimes I like to just go heads down and get things done, and I'll film in the background, and this time, let me grab this. This time, you know, I filmed in the background, and I don't know what happened. I, I think it might be operator error. I think this is one of those situations where I destroyed a bunch of footage and I didn't mean to. Uh, oops. But anyways, uh, I'm going to show you what's going on here and give you an update. So as you can see, <clears throat> um, I've got the tunnels in now and I've got the majority of it back here closed up. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I do need to get um, a tap and die system that will fit all of these screws. So the standard screw, which we use throughout this uh, throughout this is the AN509 8R8 uh, and this is the countersunk one and there's one that's the domed version of the same thing and I need to get a tap that fits that because um, a number of these screws they don't quite screw in all the way it just it gets to a point where you're stripping the head it's not going down any farther and there's been a few times when i've sat there and i've just slowly worked the screw in worked it out worked it in worked it out and eventually you get past this weird pinch point that just about all of these nut plates have and it screws it out perfectly after that i'm told that that's there because the the nut plates made of steel are intentionally slightly ovaled to give it that grip so it holds the screw unfortunately especially on some the inside the plane areas it makes it real hard to get the damn thing in and uh i know that i'm going to be doing a lot of screwing and unscrewing of some of these and if i need to make it so they don't come out i'll use loctite so that's something i need to do the other thing is is with the center tunnel here i've got the metal center tunnel in i don't know how much of that center tunnel i'm actually going to use or if i'm going to cut a big hole in it or what because I've got the uh, carbon fiber, um, uh, what, what is this? The, the console, so middle console here, the center console that I'm gonna use. And so you can see a lot of it here is kind of covering up that metal tunnel. So there's gonna be a bunch of it I can probably get rid of or cut out or whatever. I, I don't know, I imagine I wanna make that hole as small as possible because I'm, I'm told there's a lot of heat in that tunnel. I'll show you how I'm gonna deal with that later. But uh, that's one of the things I'm doing there. Now I've got, I gotta take this piece off so I can get to a couple of the pieces here. And then it's a matter of just a couple more plates I've gotta put on before working on the top. So real soon, I'm gonna be working on the top of the plane. You know, and that's gonna suck. <laughs> that's gonna be awful. So that's coming, uh, yeah. But this is coming together nicely. It is a warm day today. I am sweating like a pig out here. But, uh, you know, another good day to work out in the hangar. Uh, I think the last thing I do before I work on the top is get all the brake lines and everything in. So, uh, going to do that here very, very shortly. So... I've said it once, I've probably said it a thousand times. Follow the instructions. I don't know if it seems 
really simple, but sometimes you just miss stuff. And in this case, I missed putting these nut plates in. I should have done it a long time before now. And well, I'm just now putting them in. I don't know where I missed it. I'd have to go back and look at the steps. It's not really important. They need to be done, so I'm going to sit here and do it. But read the instructions and make darn sure that you do the entire step before you move on to the next step. And even then, when I try to do that, I still miss stuff. <sighs> Not many things, admittedly, but a few. So this was another one. I just, I missed a couple nut plates. And you always find out, like later on down the road, you're like, oh, I'm putting this thing together and, hey, these nut plates aren't here. Guess I better put those nut plates in. <laughs> That's invariably how it goes. So anyways, I'm putting nut plates in that I forgot to do or missed to do the first time, so, yay, hey, fun. All right, here we are, as promised. I'm going to test my wiring. I've got the piece of paper uh, attached, which has the wiring diagram on it, and I've got the wires running the thing, uh, you know, through the wing, and down there, you've got this other view, which is of the results. So let's see. Uh, I'm using a 9 volt battery. Now, this is 12 to 18 volts. This should work. It will show less of a, you know, less brightness, but it'll still work. So let us see now. First thing we want to test is, uh, okay, so I'm going to have to apply the, let's just put these two together. And then the taxi light is yellow. So then in theory, this and this should have a blinking light. And it does. Look at that. Some of the blinking, by the way, is going to be because it's underpowered, but it lights up. That's what I'm showing. Okay, so that's yellow. That's the taxi light. So that one works. Orange is the strobe. So that's going to be this. Uh, we're not seeing anything. Yeah, you can barely see it. It's not enough power, but it works. The wiring works. Um, purple is the connection between the wings, so I don't have to test that one. Blue is the other connection between the wings. So what's green? Green is wigwag. Uh, are we doing anything here? I'm not seeing anything on the green. Hmm. Okay, we have to check green. Green is not happy. There's the black. Red is the landing light. My battery already dead. <laughs> oh, there we go. And again, it's blinking because this is not enough power. So come on, green. Why is green not working? Oh, is that on the, this might be on the back. And you can't see that on this camera. Ooh, okay. And then brown, which in this case is, I think, see, I've got blue and purple. Blue, so yellow is yellow, red is red, orange is orange. Oh, right. In this case, brown is a white light, and I need to mark that because I didn't have a brown wire. Yep, and there's that. You can see it's 
blinking red. All right. So I need to figure out what the green is, why the green wasn't coming on. Green, I think it's supposed to be wigwag. So we're close, I need to figure it out. But anyways, there's me testing my wires with a nine volt battery, uh, 12 volts, the lights would actually come on and stay on nine volt. And this is a really old nine volt. So uh, there's probably not enough in here to actually light it up. So anyways, we. Well, I've got the fuselage basically uh, finished on the interior. And now according to the plans, I'm going to begin on the brake line and fuel lines. And I went over and I collected all of the different uh, tubes that came with it, this tubing, and there's a lot. And I don't really know what the difference is with some of them. Like there is a difference. Um, I don't know if I could show this. Let me find another one. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but you can kind of see that right here. Let me see if I can put that there. You can see how the one on the right is slightly, the whole, it, the inner diameter is slightly larger than the one on the left. Um, and I'm not sure, even though they're the same external diameter. And so I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'm not sure if one, oh, one's a fuel line, one's a high pressure brake line or, you know, what, I don't know. Uh, but I've got a bunch of, I've got a bunch of the, the, the thicker walled one. And this one's been crimped at both ends. So I'm not sure which this one is that I have to cut it and then look, but so I've got a bunch of this and I'm not sure which is which. So I've got to figure that out. And then I've got this absolute unit, this big chonky beefy boy, um, which this I'm guessing is fuel, fuel line, but so yeah, gonna look through and try to figure that out and start the process of running these lines underneath the fuselage uh, because there's a lot of lines everywhere. I mean, this picture right here shows you how egregious and gross this is gonna get. So, oof. Anyways, that's for next time, guys. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.